Hello everyone and welcome back. As promised, from this session onwards, we will get into more architectural details of read-only memory or ROM. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. In the previous session, we came to know about the hardware specification of ROM chips. We learned that inside a ROM chip, there remains a combinational circuit, which is the decoder. And this particular grid of connections, which is known as ROM matrix. Also, we learned how to embed Boolean functions as these two sum and carry functions within a ROM chip. Now, in this session, we will invest our precious time investigating a bit more about the architecture of the ROM matrix. Now, let's try and implement a three variable function using decoder and ROM matrix that is the ROM chip to be precise. Suppose this is the function that we are going to implement, and as we can observe, it's given in its SOP or sum of products form. And how do we determine that? Here, the summation symbol at the beginning gives it out. Now, as you can see, this particular Boolean or switching function involves three variables A, B, and C. Therefore, clearly we will need a decoder of configuration 3 by 2 raised to the power 3, that is 3 by 8 decoder, which has three input lines and eight output lines starting from 0 till 7. And these 0 to 7 output lines represent all the different mean terms which can be obtained using three variables. Now, if you remember, in a ROM matrix, the outgoing lines of the decoder and the lines for the functions are called connections. So, in this particular circuit, the number of connections will be the output lines of the decoder, that is all two cube or eight output lines, but that's not it. For the function, we will need another line. Therefore, in total, the number of connections will be two cube plus one, that is 8 plus 1 or 9. And we know the intersections are called links. Hence, the number of links initially is 2 cube multiplied by 1 as because we are implementing a single function. So, the number of links initially is 8. Now, in order to implement this particular function, we only need the mean terms 1, 2, 4 and 5. Therefore, all the other links will have to be burnt so that the circuit produces the output specified by this function. And as we burn the rest of the links, at last the number of links remains as 4 for these 4 intersections. Now, to be fair, we can't really do much about the number of links. However, if we try, we can reduce the number of connections. Allow me to illustrate this. So, at this particular instance, the number of connections for this ROM matrix is 9. Let's observe the truth table for this particular function, shall we? Since we have three input variables, clearly there will be two cube, that is eight possible combinations. Now, as per this function, 0, 0, 1, that is 1, 0, 1, 0, that is 2, 1, 0, 0, that is 4, and 1, 0, 1, that is 5. All these will produce ones and the rest will produce zeros. Now we will minimize this truth table using something called variable entrant mapping or VEM. In this, we will try to observe the function with respect to any one of the input variables. Let's take C in this case and the combination of other input variables, say A and B in here. So, if you observe, when A and B both are zeros, the function and the variable C are identical. So, it's safe to say that for this combination of A and B, the function is producing C. Now, when A is 0 and B is 1, the function and C are complement of one another. That is, when C is 0, the function produces 1, and when C is 1, the function inversely produces 0. So, we can say for a equals 0 and b equals 1, the function produces the complement of c, that is c bar. Now, for the next combination of a and b, no matter what c is, the function produces 1. So, we can say when a is 1 and b is 0, the function produces 1. And finally, when both a and b are 1s, no matter what c is, 
the function produces zero. Thus, this big truth table can be minimized into the truth table having only two input variables, where for 0, 0, the function produces C, for 0, 1, the function produces C bar, for 1, 0, the function produces 1, and for 1, 1, it produces 0. Do remember, this way of minimization is called variable entrant map or VEM representation. And this will help us reduce the number of connections in ROM matrix. So now we will need a decoder of 222 square that is 224 configuration where A and B will be the input lines of the decoder and the output lines will represent A bar, B bar, A bar, B, A B bar and A B respectively. Now for C, we will use a multiplexer and feed C through the select line of it. This way we will have C bar and C as inputs in the 2 by 1 multiplexer. Now for A bar B bar, that is when both A and Bs are zeros, the function produces C. So clearly we don't need the C bar link for this. For A bar B, the function produced C bar. So we remove the link of C. Then again for A B bar, the function produced 1. And if we keep the links for both C and C bar, it will be treated as C boolean or C bar, that is 1. And for A B, the function produced 0. So we remove all the links for it. And finally, we can obtain the function from the output line of the 2 by 1 multiplexer. Now if we observe, previously the number of connections were 9. And now the number of connections is 2 square that is the number of output lines of the 2 to 4 decoder and two input lines of the 2 by 1 multiplexer. So, 4 plus 2, that is 6, which is lesser than the previous orientation. So yes, with the help of multiplexer, we can reduce the number of connections in a ROM matrix. Now let's study the reduction pattern of the number of connection using multiplexers. Suppose we have a function with four input variables. Now, if we embed this using only a decoder and a basic ROM matrix, we will need a decoder with four input lines and two raised to the power four, that is 16 output lines starting from zero to 15. And for the function, we will need another line. So the number of connections in this case will be 2 raised to the power 4, that is 16 outgoing lines from the decoder, plus one line for the function, that is 17 connections altogether. Now if we introduce a 2 by 1 multiplexer, in that case, we will need a decoder with 3 input lines and 2 cube, that is 8 output lines. And the left out variable will be fed through the select line of the 2 by 1 multiplexer, which will take care of both the forms of the variable d, that is d bar and d, as we saw in the previous illustration. And finally, through the output line of the 2 by 1 multiplexer, we will obtain the function. So in this organization, the number of connections is 2 cube, that is the output lines of the 3 to 8 decoder, and the input lines of the 2 by 1 multiplexer, that is 2, altogether, 10 connections. And that's a significant amount of reduction, isn't it? Now let's see what will happen if we introduce a 4 by 1 multiplexer. In that case, we will require a 2 to 4 decoder where A and B will be the input lines and the four output lines will represent all the combinations using A and B. On the other hand, through the select lines of 4 by 1 multiplexer, the remaining variables, that is C and D, will be fed into it, which will take care of all the combinations of C and D. Finally, through the output line of the 4 by 1 multiplexer, we will obtain the function. Now let's observe the number of connections for this organization, shall we? We have 2 square, that is 4 outgoing lines of the decoder, and 4 input lines of the multiplexer. So altogether, the number of connections is 8. So, with the increasing configuration of the multiplexers, we actually have reduced the number of connections from 17 to 10 and then again to 8. Impressive, isn't it? But I'm afraid it's not always the same. 
Let me show it to you all. Suppose we have a function with 10 variables from a0, a1 to a9. Now this table will help us learn about the reduction pattern in a comparative manner. Now suppose in the first iteration, we feed all the 10 input variables into the decoder and for now, we aren't using any multiplexures at all. In that case, the number of connections will be 2 raised to the power 10 plus 1. This one is for the function itself. So in total, 1024 plus 1, that is 1025 connections. And the number of links will be 2 raised to the power 10 multiplied by 1. As we are only embedding one function, so that is 1024 links. Now in the second iteration, let's feed 5 input variables through the input lines of the decoder and the remaining 5 input variables through the select lines of the multiplexer. So now, the number of connections will be 2 raised to the power 5 plus 2 raised to the power 5 because of the 2 raised to the power 5 input lines of the multiplexer. Hence, the number of connections will be 32 plus 32, that is 64. Well, that's a significant amount of reduction in number of connections, isn't it? However, for the number of links, it will be 2 raised to the power 5 multiplied by 2 raised to the power 5 resulting in the same 2 raised to the power 10 that is 1024 links. So, we did reduce the number of connections but the number of links are the same. Now in the third iteration, let's feed 4 of the input variables through the decoder and the remaining 6 through the select lines of the multiplexer. Now if you observe the number of connections, it is 2 raised to the power 4 because of the output lines of the decoder because if we feed 4 input variables through the decoder, we will need a 4 to 16 decoder plus 2 raised to the power 6 because of those many input lines of the multiplexer. So finally, 16 plus 64, that is 80 connections altogether. Now that's an increment in the number of connections from the second iteration. And what about the number of links for this organization? It will be 2 raised to the power 4 multiplied by 2 raised to the power 6, that is again 2 raised to the power 10, that is 1024. So in this iteration, we have lesser amount of connections than the iteration 1, but more number of connection than iteration 2. Suppose, now we give 3 input variables to the decoder and the rest 7 to the select lines of the multiplexer. So the number of connections will be 2 cube plus 2 raised to the power 7, that is 8 plus 128, which gives us a total of 136 connections. Oops, it increased again. And what about the number of links? Yes, you guessed it right. 2 cube multiplied by 2 raised to the power 7, that is again 2 raised to the power 10, which is nothing but 1024. So I guess when I said that with the increasing configuration of the multiplexures, we can't always keep on reducing the number of connections, I wasn't lying, was I? So in general, if we have a function with i plus j number of input variables, where i is the number of variables which we will give to the input lines of the decoder, and j is the number of variables which we will feed through the select lines of the multiplexers in order to implement this single function, the number of connections would be 2 raised to the power i plus 2 raised to the power j, where 2 raised to the power i is the number of outgoing lines of the decoder, and 2 raised to the power j is the number of input lines in the multiplexer. And regarding the links, it will be 2 raised to the power i multiplied by 2 raised to the power j. Now, if we want to implement n number of functions, in that case, in the number of connections, the output lines of the decoder will remain the same, that is, 2 raised to the power i. However, for n functions, n different multiplexures will be required. So, the number of connections will be 2 raised to the power i plus n into 2 raised to the power j. And for the number of links, 2 raised to the power i multiplied by n into 2 raised to the power j will be the total number. So this is how we can reduce the number of connections in the ROM matrix. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope now the complex idea of the ROM matrix is lucid enough for you. 
In the next session, we will focus on the decoder inside the ROM. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.